takes a lot of nerve to get up in front of y'all looking like a beast on you. Say amen to that. Glory be to God. Welcome. Good morning. Everybody all right? Give me some shake hand music. Give me some shake. Everybody get up and greet one person. Tell them hello. Come on. Say, glad to see you. Shake their hand. Say amen to that. Just shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're looking good. What's up, Banks? How you doing? There you go. There you go. How you doing, man? Good to see you. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, you looking good? <laughs> All right. Hey, man. Hey, man. All right. Y'all feel a little bit better now? Say amen to that. Don't bear hug me. <laughs> All right, man. He just ain't goofy. You just get lost. When he hug, you just get lost. Then when he let you go, you come back. Everybody doing all right now? Come on, now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us. And we thank you so much for the grace and the mercy and all the blessings you have bestowed unto us. Guide us now, Holy Spirit, through the word of God. Instruct us and teach us. Give us revelation and illumination of what God would have us to know and what God would have us to do and what God would have us to be in the earth realm. Thank you for the power you bring to us. Thank you for the guidance you bring to us. Thank you for the headship you bring to us in our lives. Thank you for the empowerment you give us to do the will of God in the earth. So we bless God. We bless Jesus and we thank him for all he's done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen again. One more time say amen. All right, good morning to our internet audience. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're going to get right to our study. As you know, this month we're dealing with the person of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're still in that vein until the end of the month. And then we'll move to a different subject. And if you're joining us new, we set out this year on gaining a new and different perspective on the things that God has given us. And the Holy Spirit is a promise that he has given us. And he is, he is really the promise because with him comes everything that God has bestowed upon us. So grab your Bible, your note-taking materials as we go to the Word of God to inquire of the Spirit of God. As we look at today from the subject, the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The work of the Holy Spirit in us. Let's give our internet audience a big round of welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see everybody here today. Hope you're having a hot summer. Amen. Y'all don't want to be in, in, in some parts of the country. It's in, in, just in trip, it'll be in triple digits this week coming up. Be in triple digits, you know. And actually for us to be still in double digits, but we got some killer humidity. So just govern yourselves accordingly. Say amen and that. Drink a lot of water. Amen. All right, so uh, anyone here for the first, and we did all our visits. Did we have any visitors here for the first time today? Did we have any? No? They didn't stand? They hiding out, right? So they figured like I don't be here more than once. You're a visitor until you come down there. Ah, but anyway, it's all good. If you're new to the study that we've been studying for this month, we're studying the, the, the Holy Spirit. And uh, this year we set out uh, as uh, directed by the Holy Spirit. This year we're, we're teaching on and preaching on a new and different perspective on what God has given us, uh, maybe what God has done for us. And we started out in the month of January with faith, and then we went, we've come, this is our seventh lesson. And now uh, I've been teaching on Sundays and Sunday morning and Wednesday night on a different topic all three times, bringing, trying to bring, with the help of the Holy Spirit, bring all these pieces of what God has done for us into perspective and into, into operation in the life of the disciples. Say amen to that. Because if the disciple is not operating according to the design of Scripture, you can't call his or herself a disciple. Say amen to that. So the, these things must be evident. They must be operated, must be actually visibly seen in the life of the disciple. And they should even be manifested in our lives so we can see them before anybody else does. Say amen to that. So in other words, that, that God does not want the things that he has promised us and given to us to be kept a secret or hid from us. He wants them to be put on display, and the first person that needs to see them is us. Say amen to that. Isn't it encouraging when you do something, and along the way, somebody either say, hey, way to go, or something It's encouraging? God, the way he manifests what you do is his way of encouraging you to continue to keep going. Say amen to that. So this morning, again, another installment, our, 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 our lesson for this morning is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The work of the Holy Spirit in us. Many people don't know, but the Spirit of God came to do something. He did not come to just hang out 
he came to do something. Matter of fact, the evidence of him coming is what God was working toward during this whole process with mankind. Because with the Holy Spirit in man, it gives God direct inside, inside track with mankind. Say amen to that. He wanted to be inside of us. That is where he's going to direct us from and lead us from and guide us from. Say amen to that. And he does that through the person of the Holy Spirit. Say amen to that. Without the Holy Spirit working uh, in the believer, the believer ceases to be guided or directed by God. You're doing your own thing. We talked about that this morning in the only care. In the only care. Now, many of us can attest to the results we get when we do our own thing. If you're honest, say amen to that. They're not too good. <laughs> so God doesn't want it. And not only that, but he does not want us to suffer continual and constant disappointment. You're not built for that. You can't take that emotionally. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a train wreck waiting to happen. Amen? So we're going to look at this morning the work of the Holy Spirit. It is important that each believer understands uh, how important his relationship is with the believer as in the New Testament age of the church. It is important that every disciple, every believer, every person that accepts Christ understands how important it is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in this age of grace that we're living in. That's why Jesus said it was expedient for them if he go away. Christ is not here in the earth anymore. It's the Holy Spirit. Say amen to that. It's the Holy Spirit in us who is doing the will of God, making God's plan come to pass, and we'll cover that a little longer in the text. But so for today's subject, we're going to go to the book of John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, as Jesus kind of prepares them for what is about to come because his time on earth is about to end. You know, Jesus only walked there for three years. It's amazing what he was able to accomplish in three years that we can't seem to get in about 200 years of church age. Say amen to that. So it, uh, 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 now the Holy Spirit comes, he, he, as, as Christ introduces him, he hadn't made his entrance in the world today, in the world yet. Uh, that doesn't happen until the book of Acts chapter two, when he makes his appearance on the day of Pentecost. He will not make an appearance here to stay permanently until Jesus is gone. Say amen to that. So at this juncture in the text, Jesus is prepping them for his departure. Say amen to that. That he was not supposed to stay any longer than it would take him to accomplish what he did in the Gospels, go to Calvary and die. Once that was accomplished, he had to leave so he could then send the Holy Spirit back to continue the work that he had started. Say amen to that. So in John chapter 16, as he preps them for them, in verse number 12, he tells them this simple thing in the first beginning of the verse. And it's, and it's kind of like it's almost as if he's talking to us. He says to them, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So as he talks to them, he understands their, he understands where they are. He understands their situation. He said, I got many things I want to say to you. I got many things I need to deliver unto you, but you cannot receive them yet. You can't receive them because he understood that they were not uh, uh, filled with the spirit of God yet. So for him to try to explain things or tell them different things, they would not perceive it. And I've come to understand a couple of things in my church life and in my life with Christ. Say amen to that. We have been trying to do the things of God without the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when you try to do the things of God without the guidance of the Holy Ghost, you're going to do one thing, make a mess. Yeah. Say amen to that. But at the same time, we are people who are really hard-headed. We do not want to be guided by anybody. We, 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 we refuse and we, re we, we, re we rebuttal against any type of authority or our lives. Say amen to that. We do not want to be controlled. We don't want the law to control us. We don't want to be controlled by anything. And if you don't want to be controlled by anything or anybody, you're a fool. You'll grow up and you will do anything. And some folk in here who could testify that if they had somebody that they would have listened to, who they would let control them, things would have went a lot better for them than it did. Say amen to that. Can't say amen, say ouch. So the Holy Spirit is very much needed in the life of the disciple. Say amen to that. But the disciple has to submit to his authority. He has to submit to his authority and then allow him to lead him and guide him in the way that he knows God wants you to go. Because the Holy Spirit is the mind of God. Say amen to that. You will not know how to experience the things of God except you experience them through the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. 
Without that, without him showing you and directing you, you will never experience the things of God. So in verse 12, he wants to know, he said, you can't bear what I have to tell you. They were unable to receive it because they were trying to receive it with their natural thinking. And many times, that's what many believers try to do. They try to receive the things of God through a natural means. It won't work. You need, you need the Holy Spirit to help you receive because he has to reveal to you what God is actually saying to you and has to reveal to you why he's saying it and what he wants you to do with what he's saying. Say amen to that. This is not like the Dick and Jane books we used to read when we were kids where you could like, it, the book would say, see, spot, run, and then it would have a picture on there. Well, the Bible is not written. It's written, according to theologians, on a third grade level. But you need the Spirit of God to interpret what he's actually saying in the text. You ever notice that the Bible is only so thick? How can a book that's that thick carry you through your entire life and you never exhaust it? And we've been trying to adapt to the Scripture, and we'll take one Scripture, and once we get a revelation from one Scripture, we believe that's the only revelation in there. When it's actually so far from the truth. The Spirit of God can teach you everything you need to know about life, and he can use one scripture to do it because he gives you a different revelation and a different illumination of the text each time you read it. That is why when you read the Bible, say read the Bible, or when you study the Bible, you have to have an idea of what you're studying trying to find. If you're studying trying to find something about marriage, you don't look in about salvation. You look in about marriage. And then you're going to get revelation of what he wants you to know and what he wants you to do concerning marriage. I wish I had a witness. Y'all look stung. Say amen to that. But in this text, Jesus said, I have me talking to his disciples. And I think it's the same way with the church today. He still, the Spirit of God wants to reveal us so much more than we are able to receive. And that's about who we are. And that is, that's why we have to kind of, that's why we have to keep, we have to move away from this idea of having to keep getting saved over and over and over. Coming down today and coming down next week. And, I, oh, I did something wrong. I got to come down again. How many times are you going to get saved? Amen. Jesus only died on the cross once. And you on your 25th salvation process. As if it didn't take, help me somebody. Say amen to that. But he wants to reveal so much more to us, but we are unable to receive it. And as long as we are unable to receive what he wants to reveal, we stay stunned. Say stunned. In our growth as children of God. Say amen to that. So he says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You're not able to receive. They were not equipped. They were, not, they were his men. They were his children. They were his apostles, but they were not equipped yet to receive and to understand and to uh, gain some kind of insight of what he had to tell them because they did not have the Holy Spirit yet. Say amen to that. And that is what discipleship is all about. It's about receiving. Not, it's not only just learning, but it's receiving the Spirit of God in you so that you may be able to understand that which God wants from you or he requires of you. Say amen to that. Without knowing that, how do you know what to give God? And I believe the church today just kind of guessing. So we sit down, Brother Leroy, and we just come up. What do you think we ought to do with these children? Well, the Bible says train them up in the way they should go. Well, let's do this. Let's try this. What did the Bible say? And what is the Holy Spirit? He only, and not only that, but he brings to me the power that I need to accomplish what God says. He doesn't give me power to accomplish what I want to do when it's not what God says. And that's maybe sometimes that's why the church struggles so much. All of our programs, all of the things we offer are not of God. They're something we thought up. And he's not obligated to empower me to do anything with something I thought up. It's quiet in here. Say amen to that. And we try all we we try all these different and the reason we do that because we won't allow him. Say allow him. I won't allow him to reveal to me what God wants me to do because he's only gonna tell me what God wants me to do. He's not gonna tell me anything about me. He's not interested in my Christian growth or none of that. Uh, my escalate. He's going to tell me what God says, and he's going to give me power to perform and do what God says. Amen. Well, pastor, maybe, no, no. Maybe, well, pastor, let's try, no, no. What does the word say? Train them. How you train them? You teach them the word of God. 
You teach them how to remember the Word of God. And you teach them to get the Holy Ghost when they're young so they won't be so difficult for them like it was for us Amen. when we get old. Amen. Amen. Say amen to that. Everybody wants to do everything. Everybody, you know, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's, let's praise God this way. Let's praise God. What does the Spirit of God say we ought to praise? You're supposed to praise him in spirit and in truth. You ain't studying. You done missed the boat already. You worship God in spirit and in truth. If you're not a study of the world, you can't provide true worship. It's quiet in here. So if we're not doing it according to the Holy Spirit, what are we doing? Exactly. We ain't even spectators, Blue. You can't spectate God when you ain't doing what he said. You ain't even in the seats. Anyway, so Jesus, y'all all right or did you go home? Say amen to that. I know you're getting mad. I know people getting mad. He ain't got no business talking to us like that. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He says in verse number 12, you cannot bear what I have to tell you. Not, they won't be able to receive it because they can't understand it. Because what God has to say to us cannot be naturally discerned or naturally understood. Say amen to that. And that, that's what the Spirit of God is there to. He's, he's kind of like, say, go between. Just like you need an interpreter when you go to a foreign country. He's the interpreter to help you understand what God wants from you. And when you give God what he wants, you get blessed. Say amen to that. So now, and we, we, so when you go to verse number 13, which is a transitional word. First he says, I got many things to tell you, but you can't get to. Get with me on that, right? He said, I really want to be real with y'all. But if I really was real with you, you wouldn't even understand me anyway. So in verse number 13, he turns in, he says, but he said, but how be it? He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, when he comes, he hadn't come yet, but when he comes, uh, he will guide you into what? For he shall what? Not speak of himself, but what? That shall he speak, and he will what? So in this verse, God, Jesus kind of sums up. Uh, he does more, but he kind of sums up what the Spirit of God is going to do or what the believer can expect when he shows up or when he comes in him. Yes. Say amen to that. But you will never, never expect anything from the Holy Spirit if you don't know he exists. Right. And he will never exist to you because you have to believe he exists by faith and you have to receive him by faith, which is the first lesson we taught in January. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can't even serve God without the Holy Ghost. You can't get the Holy Ghost without having faith because he is the promise. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Glory be to God. So he says in the transition, he said, how be it when he, now, now he says when who? He, not it. When he, so he is a person. When he, the spirit of truth, there's a new name for him, the spirit of truth. Now, so if he's the spirit of truth, that means he only speaks truth he only brings truth he only witnesses to truth and who is truth jesus said i am truth stay close you might miss it jesus said i'm the way the so the spirit of will speak the will bear witness of the will tell you the because he cannot lie how be it when he's the spirit of truth what is come now, now, Jesus didn't say when he comes, is come, he will do what? One, the first thing he does is he's called the spirit of truth. The second, the first, the second thing he's going to do, he's going to guide you, the disciple, into what? All truth. Not only the truth as it relates to the gospel or the word of God, but the truth as it relates to everything. He will show you the inner workings, outer working, anything that surrounds anything because you are a child of God and you're not supposed to be in the dark about anything. Right. He will what? Say God. God. God, God implies lead me because I don't know the way to go. Amen. Say amen to that. God. Now, the Spirit of God can't guide a person that's rebellious. Mm. He won't even try to guide you. He'll let you go your own way. Amen. Say amen to that. He's there to guide those who would submit to his leadership. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. You know, when I was in the military, I used to go different places, foreign countries, and we take tours and stuff like that. And everywhere we went, we had a guy. Well, this one guy went with us. He always wanted to take off on his own. Didn't know where he was going because he just refused to be guided anyway. Ah, and he just was obnoxious. He really was. So, 
we, when, when we got ready to come, I got last tour, we're going to Panama Canal Zone. Back this time, they, you talk about, everybody talk about how they profile people now. Back then, they used to profile, because back then, all the drug dealers wore these big, thick chains, and they had dark glasses on, big, thick gold bracelets. And he said some of that, because we had been to Turkey Boston. So he said, look, man, trying to guys, don't, don't wear that stuff back through customs, because if you do, they're going to bust you. <laughs> Same way he was over there, just refused to be guided or told anything. So everybody else packed their jewelry because we had all bought jewelry. We packed all our jewelry up and sent it to you. Everybody went through. He comes through the line, them dark glasses on with the big old gold chain on, the big bracelet. Boop, they popped it. We all get out, got our bags, headed to, headed to get to the thing to get ready to go on home. He stuck back there and then I'm busted his suitcase open, got his stuff all scattered out and everything. So what's going on, man? Oh, they stopped me. Told you not to wear that. Told you not to wear that. What happened? No, we told you. But because you didn't want to be told, you wanted to do your own thing. See, now, now you doing your own thing, you holding up all of us. We ready to go. Trying to get home to our families. You back there, your suitcase, the stuff all busted up. Then once they busted up, they just walked away. Man, we fell out laughing at them. We sure did. But that's the idea. Say amen to that. That's the idea. God does not want us to be tripped up or handcuffed by any means necessary. So he, the Spirit of God is there to guide us, to keep us, to, to, to show us how to get through things or around things or over things, whatever the case may be. He's there to guide me to, so I won't get stuck, won't get bogged down, won't get trapped, won't get defeated, won't get beat up. Say amen to that. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I never forget when I was, uh, I was, I was, was I 10, 12, something like that. Oh, I, it might have been the Christmas day I got a whooping with an iron cord. I don't know. I, my mom told me, I think I told you this. My mom told me, she said, it was Christmas day. Everybody get a break on Christmas day. My mom said, listen, be home before night. Yes, ma'am. I had got that, this brand new BB gun, man, and it was, you know, and I was out there playing. I was playing with my cousin. She said, be home before dark. I don't care if you're playing with Jesus. Be home. <laughs> before dark and I just let plan get the best of me and I, I knew she told me to go and I could like hear a voice inside of me it's getting the sun going you better go home man I'm uh, we playing a little while longer just shooting sparkles and all that kind of stuff then all of a sudden the sun just went away <laughs> now it's dark and back then I used to be afraid of dogs and look like everywhere I tried to go there was a dog then I couldn't get so I had to go the long way around home and I got home and it was dark and she said be home before dark. So I went in the bathroom, and I did everything humanly possible you could do in the bathroom besides just get sucked in the toilet myself. <laughs> and so we had one of these little latches that go on the door like this, you know. And so while I'm in there thinking, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do because I know I'm dead, right? She took a butter knife and flit the thing and literally caught me with my pants down. Well, anyway, so I had to make a decision that night. I had to make a decision. Man, anytime you get a whipping on Christmas Day with a double plaited white extension cord, you need to make some decisions. So I made a decision. I said, you know what? That's the last time I'm getting a whipping. I said, I'm going to do what she say, when she say, how she say. And that night was the last time I got a whipping from that lady because I submitted myself to her authority. Because I realized my body couldn't take it. I wouldn't last to do it. Say amen to that. Seems like a believer's ought to get tired of getting beat up all the time. Seems like we ought to get tired of being defeated and losing everything we try because we won't submit to the headship of the Holy Ghost. Well, do the best you can with that. So he says, Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you, the disciple. He will guide you, the disciple, into all truth, for he shall not what? There we go. He's not selfish. He shall not speak of himself. Say amen to that. You can identify the witness of the Holy Spirit in you because he's only going to talk about Jesus. Which means he's going to talk to you concerning the word of God. All your directions, how you're supposed to do stuff, will come through him by the word of God. Say amen to that. He draws from the word that's in you. So if you have no word in you, it is difficult for him to draw you or guide you because he's working with an empty plate. 
It's quiet in here. So his God, one of the way he works. So he's here to do something. That's to guide me into all truth. The implication is, see, he knows the beginning and end of all things because he's the mind of God. Say me that. So with him guiding and me following, I can't be led astray. I get led astray when I take myself away from his headship and start doing my own thing. And start guiding my own self and start doing things the way I want to do them instead of the way he wants them done. Say amen to that. Well, why is it that the church is so determined to be leadership-less? We'll say Jesus is the Lord of my life, but then our actions say otherwise. Well, do the best you can with that. He will guide. He will lead the way. He leads the way. Now, Pastor, how does he lead us? He leads the way by teaching us in the things of God, what I'm doing right now. He leads us by teaching us in the things of God so we'll know exactly how God wants it, when he wants it, the way he wants it. See, many of that. God does, want, God does not desire for us to be trying and failing. Now, I know it's difficult to understand that and believe it, especially when you live in a world that says you have to fail before you succeed. Since when? You don't have to unless you adopt the world's philosophy. And if you adopt the world's philosophy, you're going to operate by the flesh, which is of the world. And you'll be fine with that. See, and this is what, that's what we, we, we just finished a study of the book of 1 Corinthians. And that's what happened in Corinth. The city was leaking its philosophy over in the church. And the church was abiding by the philosophy of the streets instead of the philosophy of the Holy Ghost. And it's the same way today. We bring what the world says and practice it in the church and then say, God bless it. And he goes, you got to be tripping. You tripping. Nobody in here where you work, where you work, will go in there with some kind of street idea on your job. And say it out loud. They'll look at you like you're crazy, just like you're looking at me for even suggesting it. Then why is it that the church will accept influence and advice from a world that's lost? It's quiet now. Say amen to that. It's the same principle. I'm going to get advice about my marriage from my single friend. Amen. That is the dumbest thing. Yeah. Right. Say amen to that. Yeah. I'm going I'm to talk to my single friends about my marriage. What you going to tell them? That, guy, that girl waiting for you to let that guy go, and she going to scoop him up because you too dumb to know what you got. Uh, and that guy you're talking to, he just waiting for you to mess up. Because the minute you send out the front door, he going to scoop up on the back because you don't know what you got. Well, uh, do the best you can with that. Truth. He's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to lead you into the, the reality that lies at the basis, not only of the gospel, but everything. Why? Because he wants you to succeed in everything. It's a witness that God is our Father when we are successful in everything. Say amen to that. It's almost like God said, you know what? I'm going to turn y'all loose in the world, but I'm going to stack the deck against the world. I'm going to give y'all me. I'm going to give you my word, and I'm going to give you power and all that. You can't help but win. Right. The only way you don't win, you don't want to. Mmm. Right. Now, so now when you talk, so to be led by the truth is not just the idea of knowing what the word says, but it's having, not from, it's forming and having an intimate relationship with the word of God. Say amen to that. And out of the relationship births disability by the Holy Spirit to guide you according to the intimacy you have with the word of God. Now, now, good, good, let's, let's see how we can, can, can bring this home. When Jesus went down to the River Jordan and he got baptized. See right? Now, we all know he was not divine. He was a flesh, blood, and bone man. Boom, right? He got baptized. Anybody ever been baptized? Anybody got wet? Okay, all y'all been wet. Now, when Jesus got baptized and he came by the water, what happened? What happened? Say it loud. So you mean to tell me Jesus got wet in baptism, Right? 
he got up, the first thing that happened was the Spirit of God came on him. What came on you when you got up? You just got wet. Now, if Jesus in the earth and in the form of man needed the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to carry out what God wanted him to carry out, don't you think we need him too? Say amen to that. Now, Jesus didn't get baptized because he was a bad guy. He got, bapt he got baptized so Scripture will be satisfied. And when he came up out of water, the Bible, God said, before, before the Holy Spirit landed on him, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. God, how could you be pleasing a guy who ain't done nothing yet? Because I know what he's going to do. You see, see, before, watch this now, before the Spirit of God came on Jesus, his mind was in the game. The Spirit of God just provided him now the power to carry out what was already. I wonder what's on our minds sometimes. I wonder what we're thinking sometimes. I wonder what we goes on between this cavity in our ears sometimes. What goes on between there that the Spirit of God finds it difficult to guide us in the direction God would have us to go? Mm -hmm. So, so it, it requires an, having an intimate acquaintance with the Word of God. Now, now that lends another thought, which means the Word of God must be alive. Oh, yeah. Nothing about God dead. Say amen to that. Well, anyway, Romans 8, 14 says it like this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? Sons of God. We looked at that week before last. This passage kicks in right here because... The disciples were the first sons of God. Jesus was the first son of God. He was led by the Holy Spirit. So now if the first son, who was God's only begotten son, on earth had to be led by the Holy Spirit, don't you think every son after him had to be, would have to be led by the Holy Spirit? As the son goes, so goes the rest of the son. Why is it that the church today refuses to acknowledge the presence and person of the Holy Spirit and we need him to carry out the assignment that God has left the church? Anything that God requires, requires him to pull it off. And that's why, maybe that's why, I, I know y'all man, maybe that's why we fail at so much. Because we're trying to do it out of our own thought process. We're trying to use our natural man to do something that's spiritual. We're trying to do, use the natural man to do something that's holy and righteous. We're trying to use the natural man to accomplish a feat for God that requires something more than our naturalization. And if you check scripture, this is not uncommon because everybody God used, the spirit of God had to come upon them to get it done. You don't think Samson took the job on of an ass because he was just strong and killed 3,000 people, do you? <laughs> Who could stand there and kill 3,000 people and not get tired? A man can't, but a man empowered by the Holy Spirit could. Say amen to that. Now, even not only that, but you see Jesus, right? How could a man have human strength enough to get beat all night then the next day carry a cross up a hill while he's bleeding and then up there they nail his hands, nail his feet, pierce him in the side. He ain't bled out yet. How do you think he did it? By the power of the Holy Ghost. See, we underestimate the power of the Holy Ghost working through us. It's quiet in here. I need him all day. This is not like every now and then, no, no, no. Remember that song like you don't miss your water till the well runs dry? Well, if you stay plugged in with the Holy Ghost, your well won't run dry. Right. Right. Say amen to that. Is that all right? Is that all right? Say amen to that. So, so, what, what, now, watch it. The Bible says all things are of God. So if all things are of God, in order for me to do the things that are of God, I need God. But I need God in the form and person of the Holy Spirit working through me yeah. to accomplish the things that are God. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Now watch the text. Yes. Then he says, uh, he says, uh, for he shall not what? Speak of himself. 
his testimony or his witness is going to be of Jesus. Now, watch this. I don't know. The work that Jesus started, say amen to that. The work that Jesus started was the beginning of the church. Say amen to that. The reason for the Holy Spirit coming, say amen to that, was not to do a new thing, but to complete the thing that was started. Maybe that's what we miss. We think that what Christ did, he finished. No, he just started it. He started it, and he gave us the example of how it's supposed to be. But he tells these boys, you can't finish it until he come and get in you. I started and began it because he was in me. If you're going to finish it, you need him in you, and he's coming to finish what I started and to complete what I started, not to start his own thing or a new thing. In other words, we ain't done being what Jesus wants us to be yet. It's quiet in here. So he says he, will, he, he, he didn't come to start a new thing. That is why it's useless to bring our, weird, our far-fetched ideas to the table with God. Oh, Lord. Not only that, he said he will speak only of me, and he will do what else he will do? He will shut, show you things to come. Oh, my God. Is there no end to this goodness? Is there no end to this goodness? Now there's a whole nother dimension. I'm a kind of guy, I hate to get blindsided by things. So I like to try to know as much as possible what's going on. And, that, and, so, and so when people don't report back, it rubs me the wrong way. Because when they don't report back and then something happened, it blindsides me. I don't quite know how to respond the way I should respond. You ever hate to get blindsided? You like to try to know what's going on? Well, the Holy Spirit is there so you won't get blindsided. Isn't that crazy? No, it's not crazy. That's marvelous that God is so in love with me that he put himself in me who can see down the road. So I don't have to walk down the road and step, trip and fall down like I'm stupid. I can see pitfalls and then go around them or go over them. Say amen that. He would do what? Show me what? Things to come. Things I haven't seen. Things I don't know. I wish I had a witness. I know it's strange talk. It's everybody looking at me strange. You can know stuff that you don't know when he's in you. You'll see them coming and know what they're coming for and know the message they're bringing and know exactly how to deal with them before they even show up on the scene. Help me, somebody. That's not only on the bad side, that's also on the good side. Every parent that's a believer with the Spirit of God in you, he will show you what your children are supposed to be and then show you how to direct them in that path. It's quiet in here. Say me to that. So the, so the idea, he will show you or he will manifest things that are coming. Why? So you won't get tripped up. Now, come on. You got to clap for God on that. Say amen to that. Who you, who you know look out for you like that? Who you know cares enough about you to do that? Who, who, you, know, who you know has your best interest at heart that they make out a plan for you that shows you every trip, every pitfall, every stumbling block so you won't stumble, trip, or fall? But God, say amen to that. It's, it's, it's unimaginable that somebody loved me like that. My parents didn't even do that. That, 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 that deal was, if you did it, you'd make your bed hard, lay in it. God goes, I'm going to show you so you don't have to make your bed hard. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see that. So he will speak of himself. He will testify of Jesus. And he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. <clears throat> the things that he wants to show are, that actually has to do with not only giving you a manifestation, but it also has to do with giving you verbal confirmation of things that are supposed to come. Now, he has a couple ways he can do that. He can either show you in a dream while you're asleep, or you can have an awakening vision, 
Say amen to that. Or he can speak to you internally from that inward witness. Say inward witness. Inward witness is when he tells you what's about to take place. And you be saying, something told me this was going to happen. Say amen to that. So there's three ways. Dreams at night. Awaken vision. That you will see something while you're awake. Say amen to that. Yeah. And you won't be hallucinating from drugs. You will see something while you're awake, or it's his inward witness that comes from the inside of you. Those are the three ways that he will show you what's to come or give you a foretelling of what's to take place. So you need to know that. So if you have a dream, that, that's why many times you have a dream, and you'll be like, well, what does that mean? Well, if he gave it to you, you're asking the wrong one. Ask him. Say amen to that. If he gave you the dream, then ask him, what did the dream mean? He'll tell you. Well, it's quiet in here. Now, th- let me give you an example of what this foretelling looked like. Turn to 1 Timothy 4.1. This foretelling. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, this is what uh, he said. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving what? Heed to seducing spirits and doctrine. That's a foretelling, right? And that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's how he shows us or tells us. What's, so he's foretelling what's going to happen to the church in years to come. Right? That holds true today. So when you see people falling away and doing those things, you've already been told. But that don't mean the church is going to end. That just means he's telling you what's going to happen. Say amen to that. That's why folk, folk be leaving here and all that kind of stuff because they don't like me. Ain't no problem. Yeah. Already know it. Because yeah. you can't, st- really, unless you desire proper instruction, you can't stay here. Right. Or if you don't want to be disciplined and just want to rip and run, do your own thing, it's going to be impossible for you to stay here. Yeah. Say amen to that. You say God doesn't call you to preach and I may not let you for five years. It might not be d- a good deal for you to stay here because I ain't moving until he tells me. And plus, he's going to show me if you show enough for real. Say amen to that. See, sometimes I think we, we just kind of walk along, you know, like, uh, 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 you know. And he's like trying to guide us. Why? So we can approach every situation with knowledge of what's going to take place so we can navigate it properly. Say amen to that. Anybody tired of guessing? Somebody ought to be tired of guessing. Somebody ought to be tired of trying to do it on their own. Somebody ought to be tired of trying and failing, failing and trying, stopping, going, all that. Somebody ought to be saying, you know what, I'm, t- I'm done. Holy Spirit, don't be so dumb. Teach me here. Teach me how to breathe. Teach me how to open my eyes, close my eyes. Guide me in chewing my food. That's, a, that's, the, I, that's what he wants. He wants to be involved not only in the big things of our life, but in the small things that we think we don't need his help. You need his help. Which piece of meat should you cut first? Cut that thing on the left and get that side. Which grain? Eat that first. Drink this last. Do that. He wants to guide us in everything. Why? So God can get the glory. Not only that, but when he guides us in all things, we, be, we, we, we get the practice of dealing with him on a regular basis. Say amen to that. Now, everything he warns you of is not bad. Sometimes he'll tell you to do something just so you'll know how to follow him's sake. You need to know how to hear him, how to recognize his voice. Say amen to that. And never, let me give you another story. When I was a kid growing up, we, we used to all be playing in the neighborhood. And all of our mothers had different voices. But all of us, all of us knew exactly when our mother called. We'd be out there playing, making so much noise, doing everything, and, thing, and somebody would stop. What's wrong with my mama calling me? And he'd be gone. <laughs> we didn't hear a thing. We didn't hear one thing. Man, what'd you? Man, man, I heard my mama calling. Because we, we had been trained. We had, and, and, and the way they trained my mom used to say, if I have to call you more than once, your behind belong to me. So I had to train myself. I don't care how far away I was. I don't care what we, we could be. Man, I'm, in, I'm, I'm rounding second base after hitting the home run. If I hear her name, I'm cutting across the field. Headed to 507 South Lee Street. Where you going, Jack, man? My mama calling me. I got to go. Because I had conditioned myself.
to hear her voice because when I didn't hear her, it meant trouble for me. And I ain't want no trouble. Not like that. Now, some of y'all like trouble, like getting whippings and beatings and all that. I don't like that stuff. I'm too tender for that. That's what I mean. I'm too tender for that. So I might well either, you can either join the club or keep hanging outside fighting against it. But as long as you fight against the club, you're like beating yourself. So he, for he, he wants, say, say that. He'll show you who to marry and who not to. He'll show you who to be involved with and who not to. Say, man, and if you really learn to listen to him, don't care how good they look, I got to let you go. Well, I've been told you ain't no good. <laughs> Say amen to that. I don't mean no harm, but you ain't good for me. But I, no, no. I love you. You're supposed to love me. I'm God's child. You can't help yourself. I understand that. I get it. All of this, you can't help yourself. Because God done done a work in it. You want a piece of the candy, but you can't. God told me you ain't the one. Y'all, I. See me in that. That's why it's, it's amazing to me that believers, when they, they be all tore up in the head when some guy or some lady finds them attractive. You're a child of God. you like gold. Who looks at gold and turns their nose up? Oh, Jesus. you You're like a new, you like a new tailor-made suit or dress. Everybody want one, but everybody ain't authorized to have it. Only a certain few can get something tailor-made, because when it's tailor-made, it have your name in it. God got his name on you. That makes you attractive to everybody. Well, do the best you can. At the Watch the text. Last part of the text. I got to hurry on. Verse 14 of the text says, He shall do what? He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall what? Show it unto you. Now, that's what, say that was a good place to shop. Here Jesus is explaining the handoff process. The handoff process. In the game of football, you have a backfield. And, and uh, when the backs line up, they have to they run a play. Each play is designed to go through a hole on the line. Right, Greg? On the right side, you have your even holes. Two, four, six, eight. On the left side, you have your odd holes. One, three, five, seven, nine. So then you have, in the old days, they used to have like a T for the, the triple backfield. They had a full back and two half backs. And uh, it was like this half back was number one, and I think he was number two. Full back was number two. And then... Uh, the other guy was number three, right? Is that right, Greg? If it's wishbone, yeah. Anyway, so based on where, he w- where the quarterback wanted the back to go, he would call their number and then the hole. So, like, he would say something like, okay, we get in a huddle. He'll say, okay, we're going to do a 31 dive. That means the number three back is going to get the handoff and go through the number one hole. 31. If he said, we're going to do a 22, like in our case, we had a 24 cross buck, right? 24 cross buck, it's an old play, it's a 24 cross buck. That's where the two outside backs crisscross in the backfield. And then this back takes the ball and then goes through the four hole out there. See, 24 cross buck or a 31 die. Or sometimes it might be a 32 slant where he slants off and goes into the two holes. Now, when that happens, all these people, the, the linemen already know where they need to push their guy so this guy can have clearing to get to the hole. See, the back, the back has to get through the hole. Once he gets through the hole, now he can do some damage on the linebackers himself, but he has to get through the hole. That's the lineman's job. Then that backfield, your wide receivers come around, right, and start taking out people that's going to be in the way. So we have a clear, clear, clear field to run the football. But, but he can't do a thing, though, unless the quarterback hand the ball to him. So Jesus is about to hand the ball to the Holy Ghost. All right, all right. It's a gift. 
so Jesus, in this text, Jesus is about to hand the ball to the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. It's not a different ball. It's the same ball because the game is still the same. The lineup's still the same. The positions are still the same. The only difference is instead of Jesus going up on the center, now it's going to be the Holy Spirit going on the center. He's still going to call the plays. He's still going to call the shots. Say amen to that. So in other words, he's here. Like I said before, he comes. And so now, what gives Jesus the right to hand the ball off? Because God gave him the ball. Oh, I need to help you, right? I need to help you there, right? Matthew eleven twenty seven. Jesus said, Matthew eleven twenty seven. he says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Right? And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. He said, first Jesus says, Everything I got, God gave it to me. So God gave me the ball. Well, Jesus, what'd you do? I paid a price for that ball. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I did some things that were humanly impossible. I did some things that nobody on the planet could do. I, I paid a price that has been, that was beyond price paying. And as a result of that, God delivered the ball to me. In other words, God said, the game is in your hand. So now, he puts it in Jesus' hand. Now, Jesus says, when he, did, he shall, the Spirit is going to receive of mine. See the past? See the past? So the Spirit of God is out there now like uh, in the backfield. He said, okay, this is how it's going to do. You're going to do a 31 dive. He's going to say, I'm going to hand the ball to you. See, in the 31 dive, the quarterback just comes a step to the side. He puts the ball into the uh, uh, running back's hand. Then he fakes something like that like he still got it. Then he should phase on out the pitcher. Say amen to that. Now, if you're not paying attention to the play, you'll be following the quarterback. Right, 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 right. And that leads the, 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 full, the halfback shoom, through the gap. See, a lot of us still trying to follow Jesus, and he done faded out the pitcher. It's the Holy Ghost who left with the ball now. Oh, Lord. See, see the text? He shall receive of mine and do what? Show it unto you. It ain't his, it's mine. It don't belong to him, it's mine. So when Jesus said he's going to talk to you about me, he's going to talk to you about me because what I'm giving him is mine. I earned it. I earned the right for it to be mine. It's mine, not his. And he don't have a problem with that. See that? So here's the Spirit of God. Now he comes. The lineup is line still the same. Church. Gifts. The only thing different is the quarterback. Same game. Same backfield. Same scoring principles. Say, wait. Holy Spirit comes in and says, now, this ain't a new game. This is the same game. Wait. I'm just a substitute for the number one quarterback. Say me into that. But we're still playing the same, same team strategy, same everything. I'm going I'm to do the same counts he did. I'm going to hand it off just like he did. Don't be expecting something different. So he said, when Jesus says, he shall receive of mine, you say, I'm handing him what's mine. You mine, I'm handing you over to him. The gifts are mine, but I'm handing them over to him to you. They all mine. I earned them. I worked for them. I did what God, I did what nobody else do. They belong to me. I'm handing them to him. But see, you'll never know the handoff been made if you're still trying to follow Jesus. Jesus sitting in heaven. All things are delivered to me, a father. And nobody said, he said, so he said, he shall glorify me for he shall receive a mine and shall what? Show it to you. Now, watch it. Wait a minute. Jesus did the same thing. After he received the Holy Spirit, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was showing the disciples what it all looked like. But he told them, you won't get to understand it until the Holy Ghost comes. Now watch this, watch this. Let me hurry on. Look at John, in John 16, 7. John 16, 7. Here it is. Here it is. Why It makes sense now. 
Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Mm-hmm. Say expedient. expedient. And now, the word has to, the Greek word has to do with advantageous. In other words, you're going to gain something if I leave you. <laughs> they start tripping. No, no, you don't. See, see, without the Holy Ghost, you can't see the big picture. We don't want you to leave. No, 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 you don't understand. If I leave you, you're going to be better off. Why? Because I'm outside of you. You need me in you. I can't be in you while I'm here. I got to go and send back. So he said, y'all all right or did you go home? You see, we are better off than having Je- with, with us because now we have the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of God in us instead of the presence of God being just in Jesus. That's why he says, greater works than these you shall do because I go to the Father. He says, it's better for the earth if all y'all be spirit-filled than just me. Look at the text. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is ex- expedient. Now, nobody could ever really fathom that it'd be better off for me if Jesus left me. It is fitting for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will what? See the handoff? Did you see it? You see it? He up there in heaven. I can see the whole, like tag team wrestling. He's up there in heaven waiting. He can't come in the ring. He's dancing all around the ring. Got his hand out. Jesus, no, not yet. Trying to get that tag in because he can't come in until the tag is made. He's sitting there watching from heaven. He, he's watching Jesus get whipped. He's watching them brutalize him. But he wants to tag. No, I can't tag in yet. See, he's in heaven, but he's working on Jesus, giving him the ability to go through all that. Man, I need to get in there. I need, I, no, 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 not yet. He, he won't tag in until he see a cloud. When he saw the cloud leave up from heaven, and when Jesus got it tagged in, boom, he said, now you got 50 days. 50 days before you can make your appearance. 50 days. Day of Pentecost. 50 days. And 50 days after Jesus' ascension, he tags in. And boy, he comes in. Rushing mighty wind. Cloven tongues of fire. People speaking in tongues. People healing folks people laying hands on folks. So he got, when he got a chance to tag in, he came in on fire and the church missed him. We still waiting for Jesus. You don't need to wait for Jesus. You got the Holy Ghost. Say amen to that. Now let's see you. Do I hear anything else? I'm done. Good Lord, Hank, have a great day. The work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's easy to receive him because you receive him by faith just like you receive any gift of God. But first you have to know what the word says about him. And you have to develop faith for the word, for what the word says about the Holy Ghost. And you can, if you want to receive him, I the spirit of the living God, I know you exist. And I know God has sent you to indwell me. So I release my faith now, and I receive your indwelling presence in me, in the name of Jesus. The evidence of him indwelling you is the ability to speak in an unknown tongue. Say amen to that. But don't try to receive him in fear, doubt, unbelief. Waste of time. That's why it doesn't happen for many folks. And you really don't need hands laid on you to receive him. It's a faith move. It's a faith move. But without him working in you, it's going to be difficult accomplish the task that God has set forth for you to do. Say amen to that. Everybody has a desire to be good and everybody has a desire to be successful and that's God's desire too. But it doesn't come without a road map. It doesn't come without a road map. I watch, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, kind of an avid golfer and I watch the stories of all these guys when they started playing golf. They started, their dad started in the plane when they were, could barely walk. And they talk about how their dad instructed them and taught them and how they would listen to him and take his instructions and take his guidance because they wanted to be successful. And as they submitted themselves to their father's guidance and to their leadership, they started establishing and setting goals for themselves. 
like Justin Thomas, when he was like six. He, he had an interview when he was six years old, his little club about that long. He made a 14-foot putt, and it was an interview. He said, well, I hope that when I get to be, uh, like after college, I'm good enough to go on the PGA Tour. He not on the tour, he's winning the tour. It started when he could barely walk. Why do we refuse guidance and instruction that's there to make us better? What is it about us that hates submitting to authority? What is it about us that don't want anybody to tell us anything? Don't want to show us anything. We just want to be left alone to destroy ourselves. What is it? It's the enemy. It's the enemy because he knows there is greatness in you. But he doesn't want it to come out. And he doesn't want you to realize it. Because the minute you realize it, he has no more control over you. That's why he tries to keep convincing you about things that have been past gone away are still an issue for you when they're not. When the Spirit of God has given you power to rise above in your thinking and everything so that you can be and do all that God has purposed for you to be and do. If you receive that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. <laughs> Hallelujah. The work. We'll continue on with that as we move forward to see what other things he wants to do, but uh, the spirit of the living God, is very, he's very much alive, and it is him. He's going to take the church the rest of the way. It's going to be under his guidance, his leadership. Amen. He's going to guide us and lead us just like Jesus left it. He's not going to change anything. He's not going to change the direction of the church. He's not going to diminish it. He's going to guide us until Christ comes back. That's his job, to take us the rest of the way. Jesus is not coming back. Don't even pray for him to come back. He's not coming back. When you see Jesus again, you might ask him to give you some more time. Because the time, next time you see him, it's going to be a very different Savior when he shows up the second time. Say amen to that. So uh, to our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in today. If this message has reached you and you find yourself in a place where you are still trying to live your life your way, you can do that. And you have very right to do that. But if you really love God and you want to be successful for him, you, it, it's incumbent upon you to submit yourself to the headship of the Holy Spirit. And like I said, it's simple to receive him because he's a promise to you. Just believe by faith. Ask him to come into you and fill you with his presence. And if you believe by faith, he will show up in you. And he will do the things to you. If you allow him the headship, Give him the throne, the throne of your life. He will guide you in the way that Christ will have you to go. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember as we leave you and as you leave us, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God bless you. See you on the next broadcast. Come on, put your hands together.